so I am going to do a couple of Disneyland planning videos just because I couldn't really find that much information when I was planning um, so I was a little bit clueless so I thought I would cover some of the basics so if you're looking at going to Disneyland or if you're just interested about planning Disneyland then um, there's some information out there for you so with flights I just go on a comparison website I put in my dates the places I want to go and I just pick the cheapest basically. I wasn't planning on flying Virgin for any specific reason. When I first looked at planning the trip actually BA were cheaper but on the day I came to book Virgin was the cheapest airline so I booked with them and the bonus with that is I do get points um, that I can use and um, the advantage of that also which I didn't realise is coming back if you are a flying club member you can book your seat coming back 72 hours before the flight so you for free so rather than paying the money to um, to choose your seat before check-in or having a seat allocated to you on check-in on the return flight you can actually pick your um, flight your seat um, so that's airlines hotels again I stayed off site I really didn't have any idea where to look for hotels but pretty much anywhere between Convention Way and um, up along South Harbour uh, Boulevard. I won't go any further than uh, south than Convention Way because it is about a 20 minute walk from here, which is fine for me. I don't mind doing that. It doesn't take that long. Um, and also at the end of Convention Way is the Toy Story parking lot, which means that you can um, get the bus to and from Disneyland if you want to. Um, but there's loads of um, hotels around from here. I can see the Marriott, the Hilton and the Sheraton and there's loads of little motels all the way along, loads of independents that you could also stay at. In terms of tickets, I got a five day hopper ticket. Five days is the maximum and then you would have to buy a one day, two day, three day ticket to add on top. Because I bought my event night ticket, that got me in at five o'clock. Uh, so I actually did get six days in Disneyland, although it was sort of five and a half days because I had the seven hours of the party night as well. Um, originally I was just planning to do five days but luckily managed to squeeze in another day. Um, I bought my tickets on Attractions Tickets Direct just because they worked out cheaper than buying them with Disney Direct and they send you the actual tickets as well so you get your hard copy tickets which means you don't get an email, you don't have to worry about going to collect your tickets, you actually have the physical ticket which you can take with you and you can link it in the app beforehand as well. In terms of the app the, it's much more basic than My Disney Experience, but if you've used the Walt Disney World app, you will know how to navigate your way around. It does the wait times, the characters, and all that sort of stuff. You can link your ticket, which allows you to buy Max Pass, which I will talk about in a separate video, and it links all your photo pass and dining reservations as well. So you can do dining reservations through the app too. Getting from LAX to Anaheim, I got the Disneyland Resort Express. Now there are loads of companies, shuttle companies, that do trips from LAX to Anaheim. The reason I picked the Disneyland Resort Express, apart from the fact that it is official, it's like the Magical Express, it's just not called the Magical Express, um, is that it was actually cheaper. It was only, I think, four or five dollars cheaper than the other company I looked at, but um, they were the cheapest, so I went with them. You can pre-book which is advisable in case the coach is full and you, it's cheaper if you pre-book a round trip as well rather than two singles um, but if you don't pre-book then you just get on the coach they drive you all the way to the Disneyland Hotel then when you get to the Disneyland Hotel they will um, take your payment when you come out of the arrivals if you turn to the right there's an information desk just walk past the information desk and go through the first set of um, double doors on the left hand side turn right and keep walking there'll be two um, kind of like roads divided by a pavement and up above you'll see signs telling you whether it's like pick up and drop off whether it's buses taxis all that sort of stuff so what you want to look for up at the top is the green sign and it will say Disneyland Resort Express um, so you just go and stand underneath that sign you'll need to cross the first road which is I think taxis and then there's like a concrete pavement island in the middle 
There is benches there. So just sit and wait and the Disneyland Resort Express will turn up. I saw a couple of minibuses that had Disneyland Express on them. That's not them. It is a proper coach. It does have the Disneyland Resort Express on the side. It takes about, oh, I can't remember, I think it was an hour and a half to get here. Um, the buses run from the airport once every hour and to return there once every two hours. Um, and although on the way here they'll drop you off right outside your specific hotel if you tell them where you're going to, on the way back to the airport you have to pick specific pickup locations. So my nearest one is next door at the Marriott by the convention centre. Um, but you could also just go to the, any three of the Disneyland hotels and they will pick up there as well. Um, times are a bit iffy for me. I could either go at 1.30 and get to the airport for 3, but my flight is at quarter to 9. So what I've opted for is the half past 3 bus, which gets me to the airport at 5. Now I know they say all oh, 3 hours for an international flight is fine, but I like to give myself 4 hours and that's not quite 4 hours, so my anxiety is a little bit... Um, but yeah, I'll add in a little section here to talk about getting the bus back because obviously I haven't done that yet, I'm still in the hotel. So on the website you can put in your hotel and it will tell you the nearest point to your hotel. Mine was the Marriott Hotel and outside it will have a sign that says airport shuttle so you know that you're at the correct bus stop. In terms of when you actually get here and get into the parks, um, if you want to be front of the line, you really need to be at the gates an hour before the park opens, and that's because you've got to go through security, and then people will queue up in, uh, in front of the turnstiles about an hour before, and there will be a big crowd um, when you actually get there. They do a little opening ceremony, which is really sweet. They pick a family of the day who get to announce that Disneyland is open and then what they do is they let everybody up Main Street and they hold you all in the hub until opening time and then they let everybody go. So just beware, if you've ever been to Disneyland Paris and you know that you can turn up 10-15 minutes before opening, maybe half an hour if it's busy, I would recommend if you want to be front of the line because you need to get in to do a specific thing and you want to be first on, get there an hour before just because you will have to take time to having bad checking everything. In terms of parades and shows, um, again this was something that I'd forgotten about at Disney because I don't tend to wait that long for fireworks and stuff, but people here do wait over an hour before the parade and fireworks, so last night people were getting ready, they were in the front row seats for the fireworks two and a half hours before, which if you want to do is fine, I wouldn't ever do that, um, but if you want front row you can do that. Um, the Pixar Parade, I think I waited an hour and 15 minutes for it and again I wasn't quite front row, I had the bins in front of me which is fine because there's no one stood in front of me. Um, but for parades and fireworks and stuff I would recommend getting there at least an hour before if you want to be at the front or anywhere near the front. In terms of Fantasmic, there's actually um, three things you can do with Fantasmic. Um, you can get a dining package. So there's two types of dining package. Table service where you actually sit and watch the fireworks in a seat. There is the quick service dining package which I did where you get to go into the viewing area and you sit on the ground. There's fast pass which I did last night. Um, so you go to the fast pass ticket booths near the river boat. You can do that throughout the day and it doesn't interfere with any of your other fast passes so it's a no brainer really if you want to watch Fantasmic go straight and get your fast pass first thing in the morning. But it's a brilliant system because your fast pass is only, only valid from half an hour before the show starts. So you don't have to sit there for like an hour or 45 minutes waiting for the show to start. You're literally in the line and then about um, just after 10 o'clock they opened up the line, they let us in and then by the time I'd got my space it was probably 10 past 10. So I only actually had to stand and wait for 20 minutes before Fantasmic started which is absolutely excellent, so I'd recommend doing the fast pass for Fantasmic and I'd actually recommend doing that over the quick service dining package that I did because you actually get a better view. Um, yeah, you're at the side, but you're at the side on the other, on the dining package as well and it didn't 
detract from my viewing at all and I could have gone a lot further along when I went into the viewing area but I decided I'd rather be closer to the front than further around um, so I wouldn't actually, if I did it again, I probably wouldn't do the dining package for Fantasmic because it's an expensive meal for what it is, for quick service and A, you have to wait ages because you want to get in and sit down and not be the last ones in at the back um, you're further back from the action um, and you have to wait for ages so I would do a fast pass um, for Fantasmic Characters roam everywhere a lot of them don't have official meets, they'll just kind of be wandering around and you just stop and take a picture with them. The only problem with this is if you're travelling solo like I was, you need to find a friendly passerby to take your picture because they don't have, some of them don't even have character attendants, let alone photo pass photographers. So just look out for those roaming characters. Um, I just saw Dr. Facilier just popped into the dress shop while I was buying a dress and then was just casually leaning up against the wall when I went outside. He was very, very good. Um, Oswald was roaming around. All of the Fab Five were roaming around yesterday in California Adventure. Um, they're all over the place, so just go up to them and they will take a picture and sign an autograph, but just be polite, just go up to them. A lot of them, they like you to say, please can I have a picture? Please will you sign my autograph book? Rather than you just kind of shoving the autograph book at them or just standing next to them while someone's trying to take a picture. But as long as you just ask before you do it, then they're absolutely fine with it. So <clears throat> I met so many characters. Even though the lines aren't really long, they hardly take any time at all. The line for Pooh, Tigger and Eeyore yesterday, at Disneyland Paris, that would have been a 20, 25 minute wait by the length of the line. Within 10 minutes I joined the line, gone through the line and seen all three characters, it was really really good. So the lines again are really really efficient. Um, there are photo pass photographers everywhere. I think I stopped to pretty much everyone I walked past. I don't think I actually just carried on walking past one the whole time. They are everywhere and if you've got Max Pass you might as well just pose for pictures because you've paid $10 and all the photographs are included in that $10. So. I just went for it and a lot. I, I think every single day I was in the Disneyland park I had my picture taken in front of the castle just because it's the castle. Um, another thing that I found really useful was the fuel rods. Now they do have these in Walt Disney World as well but my um, power bar charger is on its last legs so it doesn't always charge, it doesn't give off enough power, it doesn't give a full charge even though it says it is. So the fuel rod was really good. It was $30 which I didn't mind paying because that's pretty much what you would pay for one on Amazon or somewhere anyway. And the beauty of them is, is when they run out, if you're in the park and it runs out, you just go and drop it in the machine and get a new one, free of charge. So it's a, just a constant reuse. Plus you can recharge them um, using a, a USB. So um, it's not only use, useful when you're in Disney. Um, with the charging stations, you can reuse it outside as well. So if you buy one, don't worry about thinking, oh, I'm only going to be able to use it when I'm on the trip. You can take it, um, take it home and charge it, and it will work absolutely fine. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about was um, the weather, what to pack. So I looked at the weather forecast the week before I came out, and it said it was going to be around 23, 24 degrees and sunny, maybe partly cloudy at times. Um, I feel the cold, so for me anything below sort of 25 degrees can be chilly, um, but the weather here, first thing in the morning it's cold, um, it tends to be sort of hazy until about 9 o'clock and then the sun comes out, and then it's a hot sun, and it gets hotter and hotter until, as you would expect, between sort of 1 and 3, it's absolutely scorching. And then from 3 o'clock onwards it starts to get cold again, by 6 o'clock it will be, for me, freezing. Um, I kept laughing to myself because if ever I went to the toilet at sort of 6 o'clock in the evening you could just see underneath all of the stall doors just people taking off their shorts and putting trousers on so um, if you're not wearing trousers and a sweatshirt for the full day you're wearing shorts and t-shirt you will need a bag big enough that you can pack jeans and a jumper possibly even a jacket actually I don't think I would have been warm enough in a jumper either um, so that you can get changed in the evening because if the park's open till midnight that's sort of six seven hours when it's cold and it is very cold and the wind is really cold so um, you definitely need to make sure that you bring enough clothes so that you've got a warm set of clothes as well as a sunny set of clothes because you will need both every single day um, because 
at night it is really cold walking around here and you won't be able to wear, unless you don't feel the cold, you won't be able to wear what you're wearing during the day in the evening, especially if you're sitting down and waiting for fireworks. For paint the night, I was so cold that I had to put my poncho on and kind of create a little wind tent around me and then I was breathing inside it to try and fill it up with hot air. I was absolutely frozen and afterwards I couldn't really hold the camera straight. I was so cold my hands were shaking involuntarily. Um, so just be prepared for that. The other thing is today is supposed to be my pool day and the reason I'm filming this video now is because it's 16 degrees and cloudy outside. It's definitely not a pool day. Um, and it did rain last night. It wasn't heavy rain. It was sort of drizzle, but it did rain for a good sort of two or three hours last night. So make sure you're prepared for that as well. Having said that, it is warm. So it, going on the water rides, you could get away with getting wet. Yesterday I did do Splash Mountain and I was frozen after I did it because I got wet and it was cold but I still dried off quite quickly it wasn't too bad um, so I think that's it so if you've got any planning questions about Disneyland um, just let me know in the comments below and I will either film a little video about it or I will respond to your comments and if you've been to Disneyland what's the one thing that you wish you'd known before you came uh, I'd be interested to know <coughs> mine would definitely be the weather in that when you look at it and it says 23 degrees it doesn't mean it's going to be 23 degrees it means it's possibly going to reach that and most of the day it's going to be cold um, so yeah there you go there are my planning basics for Disneyland that's helpful and I'm going to do a couple more little planning videos about other things so that I can go into them in a little bit more detail but for now thank you for watching <laughs>